good morning. Thank you and God bless you this morning for joining us for early morning prayer and devotion. I'm excited about what the Lord is going to do today through our prayers and I'm excited um, about the prospect of us all growing together in the grace and knowledge of the Lord as we um, pray together and study the Word of God together this morning. It's good to see you already signing on this morning. I welcome you, Ben and Jennifer, and so thankful for each of you. Um, I believe God is going to do great and mighty things. I believe He already is, and um, we're just going to experience wonderful things together. Uh, there's a new phrase that's out there right now that doesn't sound like it belongs. Um, alone together. And that just doesn't sound right. But in this unique time that we're living in, we're actually experiencing that phenomenon that we can be alone and yet be together at the same time because of technology. And so we're going to get right into our prayer request this morning. I do have a praise report and update on um, Brother Eli Hernandez as we begin to think about those who are suffering with COVID-19 this morning. Um, Brother Hernandez has just been on a very long, slow road to recovery. Um, I reported to you yesterday that they had dropped his vent pressure settings from 14 to 10. The goal of that is to get it down to five. Well, this morning, I can report to you they lowered it uh, late last night from 10 down to eight. So we give God praise for that. And they're asking for prayers today. He's needing a blood transfusion, and that is scheduled. Uh, it may have already happened this morning. I don't know, but it, it's scheduled for today. And they want us to pray for a safe blood transfusion and for the internal blood seepage to stop. So we're going to ask that in Jesus' name today. We want to continue to pray for the Trimble family. I do not have an update on the Trimble family other than what I told you a couple of days ago, and that was a good report. Our New York Metro District churches that have been hit so hard with COVID-19 diagnoses, at least 65 of those, including pastors. Uh, Carmen's friend Jessica in Chicago, uh, who has tested positive for COVID-19. We want to remember her today uh, in prayer. Star's friend Christy's mom and dad are both battling the virus. My Aunt Faye has a loved one who is diagnosed with coronavirus as well. So this is not something that uh, is not touching our lives. Uh, I believe it's affecting everyone in some degree. And of course, when it comes to the economy, we're all being affected uh, by that as well. So we have much to pray about as we continue this battle against coronavirus. And it's not just the doctors and researchers that are battling it. But prayer warriors, we're battling it today. And the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Amen. That's our job today in the spirit, to pull down those strongholds of the enemy as we pray in Jesus' name. Uh, another person here locally uh, has been tested for COVID-19 and they are waiting results. So we want to pray for that person today. We want to continue to pray for protection and strength for those who are on the front lines against the virus. Um, we mention them every day, but people who are working in hospitals, our healthcare professionals, um, people working in grocery stores, our truck drivers, um, our first responders and police officers and firemen, all of these put themselves in harm's way on a regular basis just as part of their job description. And... Um, and they don't have to do that. They don't have to choose that particular field of employment. But we're thankful for each of those who are standing in the gap for us. And we must stand in the gap and intercede um, on their behalf before God today. And that's our blessing and privilege to be able to do so. We want to pray today for our country, our nation, to be able to reopen and to fully recover and, you know, when you listen to the news, of course, they're predicting just the worst um, possible things to happen, uh, a, a Great Depression magnitude kind of thing. 
but I have confidence in our God and uh, in our in our uh, system of government that we're blessed to live under uh, democracy freedom capitalism and uh, I believe that we're going to see a full recovery by the help of the Lord amen so we're going to pray that prayer today yet again uh, that we would soon see our nation reopen and that we would see a full recovery we want to continue to pray for the Chattanooga area in the aftermath of uh, the tornado that happened there just uh, night before or last yeah not before last and also my uh, birthplace of Jonesboro, Arkansas, uh, I guess it's already been a, a couple of weeks, uh, but they had a tornado as well. So we want to pray for recovery for these areas and for the families that are suffering loss of home and even life of family members. And so we want to remember them in prayer this morning. We want to continue to pray for Jamie Dixon uh, in the hospital and being tested for lung cancer. And I have not yet heard those results. We're going to pray in faith today, amen, for his healing and also uh, that he would be restored in his walk with God. We want to continue to remember Beth's family and her aunt's family in prayer. I'm so thankful, Beth. I know you'll be watching this a little later. We're just so blessed to have you as part of our congregation and so thankful for what God is doing in your life and in your family. We're going to continue to hold your families up in prayer today. Amen. We have several that are battling cancer. And when I mention these names, these are representative of people that we know about. You have other people that maybe you haven't mentioned or you know someone, someone you work with that's being affected by different disease processes in their body or, or a family member that's suffering. And um, just go ahead and lift their name up. Speak their name, amen, before the Lord today uh, as we call these other needs before the Lord. But we want to remember Caden and Michael Boland, Delbert Bryant, all suffering with cancer. Um, we want to pray for Brandy Bryant for a full recovery from stroke. Uh, my mom or my uh, mother-in-law and my father, Beulah Ziegler, Ron Bryant, um, battling with Parkinson's disease. We want to pray for Priscilla Col Coleman's husband, who is needing God's direction and the decision that he has to make. Prayers for prodigals for backsliders. We need to constantly be going to the throne of grace on behalf of those who have strayed from the Lord, uh, specifically Amy Moore's son and Marsha Moore's sons, both of them. Amen. We want to believe today for their complete restoration and spiritual healing in Jesus' name. Uh, Micah Mitchell needing a healing touch in his body today. We want to lift him up in prayer. Uh, let's continue to pray for Gerald Yeely, that he will get to go home soon from the hospital. And we've had several good reports in regards to Gerald's condition uh, over the past several days. So let's just keep believing the Lord that he will continue to confound the doctors and we would see a um, full recovery for him after traumatic brain surgery. Uh, let's continue to pray for Ronnie and Paula Storms today. Uh, Ronnie because of sickness and Paula uh, with heaviness of spirit today. And we know that the Lord has a joy to replace that heaviness today, peace to replace that. And we want to pray for those who during this time have lost a loved one uh, due to COVID-19 or, or just uh, other illness. There are many people in need of comfort um, and peace in the presence of God today lifting up Chris Rogers, aunt and uncle, who both suffered loss recently, and um, my high school friend, Laura Taylor's family, uh, who's coping with the passing of uh, loved ones. I mean, I'm excited to see your reports coming in this morning um, and to see all of you signing on here. Uh, I think the first fruits were Ben and Jennifer this morning, and we welcome Brenda, Mariah, Bethany, Star, uh, Brother Mike Williams, uh, Tammy, uh, Judy watching with us this morning, praying with us, Caroline, God bless all of you, Penny, um, Mom and Dad with us this morning, and you know, I noticed yesterday that we had 11 views um, for the prayer meeting before, the day before, um, 
on YouTube, and we post it there later. It's not live, but we, we archive it there later so that those who do not have uh, access to Facebook or do not have an account with Facebook can watch it on YouTube. I noticed we had 11 views on there, so, and YouTube's a kind of a different animal. The, with Facebook, there's a lot of distraction. You're, a lot of people just land on us for a moment while they're scrolling through, and some of them will take interest and stay around, and others just keep scrolling. But with YouTube, you kind of have to be uh, on the lookout for the material that you're wanting. So I thank God for those 11 that join us through other methods and those who watch this throughout the day. And at whatever time that you view this, whether you're viewing it live or otherwise, um, join right along and pray with us. And let's see God move in our situations. We welcome you, Priscilla, this morning. God bless you for joining us. I'm just so thankful for each and every one of you that are praying with us and believing with us. And yesterday I mentioned to you uh, my desire for you to share this, to um, to start watch parties, uh, to get other people interested, and you have done that. We had a record number of views yesterday, and so I believe that this is just a movement that's a sovereign work of God. It's not based upon personality. It's not based upon flash and dash or anything. This is a prayer revival that we are currently experiencing, and I thank God for it. Amen. I want to continue to talk to you today, and we will the rest of this week. There's much to talk about um, when it comes to this idea of, of uh, miracles and healings. And picking up where we left off yesterday, I want to read to you from Luke chapter 17, verse 12 through 14. And it says, as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass, I want you to notice this, it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. While I was reading and reflecting on that passage of scripture about these 10 lepers that Jesus miraculously cleansed, I realized that it uh, not only is possible for us to miss our healing because God did not choose to work a miracle when we first prayed and we were still experiencing symptoms and therefore we lost uh, our faith and, and we gave up too soon. But it's also possible for us to miss out on a miracle because we didn't experience healing after we didn't get a miracle. You know, as I told you yesterday, and I, I hope that I caused you to understand that the nature of miracles and healings and the operation of it is, is quite different. A miracle is instant. It happens uh, in a moment. But a healing is a progressive work. And so if you have that understanding and you didn't receive a miracle, um, then you continue to believe that you're being healed if you have that understanding. Um, but then when healing doesn't come for quite some time, um, then sometimes uh, we lose hope in that situation uh, as well. And, and maybe I'm not explaining this uh, succinctly, so let me back up and try it again. The conclusion that we have come to, or at least what I have always seen is a different, differentiation between miracles and healings, is that miracles are instantaneous in nature, whereas healings are progressive works. Therefore, we never think of progression in terms of the miraculous. But even a cursory surface study of the miracles of Jesus reveals that indeed many times this is the case. Just look at the various miracles that Jesus worked. There were many miracles that happened in a moment. Yes, he just reached out and he, he touched the blind man's eyes and immediately he received his sight. He touched the deaf man and in that moment his ears popped open and he could hear. He spoke the word. And in that very hour, the devil went out of a tormented uh, girl. But there were other miracles that did not happen that way at all. Rather, it was required that those who were um, in need of a miracle show or demonstrate their faith by their works. And when they involved themselves in God's process by virtue of doing whatever Jesus told them to do, 
they eventually progressed to the place where they did receive their miracle in a moment, in an instant. And there are multiple, multiple examples of this in the New Testament. Uh, but we're going to just hone in on one here this morning, and we'll talk about some of the others on uh, Thursday and Friday morning. But this was the case with these 10 lepers that we read about in our scripture text this morning. Luke chapter 17, verse 12 through 14 says, And as he entered into a certain village, there met him 10 men that were lepers, which stood afar off, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves to the priest. And it came to pass, and you've got to get this, that as they went, they were cleansed. When he spoke the word to them, that they were to go show themselves to the priest, and they looked at their flesh, they were still lepers. But the Bible says that it came to pass that as they went, as they obeyed Jesus' command, they were cleansed. We need to understand that some things, some miracles happen as we go. If you believed for a miracle and you did not receive it, and you believed for a healing and you didn't receive it, do not give up. Just keep on going. I want to tell someone this morning, you are making progress. You are on your way to your miracle. And if God said it, you just keep on believing and you keep doing whatever that he told you to do. Be assured your moment is coming. I don't know exactly at what point those lepers looked down and realized that they had been cleansed, but there was a moment when it happened. That's the difference between uh, the miracles and healings is healings are a progressive work. Sometimes you can't even hardly tell that it's happening and you just feel a little better day by day. Um, but with the miraculous, there is a moment that defies the course of nature, that reverses things. And I want to encourage you today that just because the miracle hasn't happened already doesn't mean there's not going to be that moment that God is going to step in for you. For these lepers, we don't know exactly when it happened. Maybe it happened before they had walked 50 feet away from Jesus. Or maybe they walked all the way from the moment that Jesus spoke the word of promise to them until they were only 50 yards from the priest. But the Bible says it happened as they went. I want you to listen very closely right now. Since we know that miracles are instantaneous in nature, what we do is we tend to lose heart when our miracle does not happen immediately. But I've come to tell someone today that something can be instant without being immediate. I want you to let that soak in. Something can be instant without being immediate. Uh, use uh, for example, we'll use here instant coffee or instant tea. I can't imagine why anybody want to drink this stuff, but if you're in a fix, you know, I know some people actually like the taste of it, but with instant coffee, you can say to your spouse this morning, could you make me some instant coffee? And he or she might wait 10 minutes before making your instant coffee. But whenever they choose to do it, it will be instant. Now, you might be upset because what you really meant was, and you didn't want to say it in this manner because uh, you wanted them to actually make the coffee for you and not be angry with you and tell you to do it yourself. But what you really meant was, make me some coffee this instant. The point I'm making is that God can do it instantly without doing it right now. And sometimes God's answer to our prayer in the moment is not right now because he has a perfect time. He has a perfect season in his plan for his glory to be shown forth. The Bible uses the word immediately 55 times, but it uses the word suddenly a comparable 40 times. Immediately means right away or right now. Suddenly just means abruptly. It really doesn't signify when something's going to happen, but only that when it does happen, it won't take long. There's a scripture that elder ministers uh, quote to young ministers quite often whenever 
uh, they're thrust into a situation they did not feel adequately prepared to minister in. And I remember as a young minister, I was placed in a lot of those uh, situations. And then the elder minister would say to you when they noticed your trepidation and your fear, they would say, you know what the word says, be instant in season and out of season. Now the context might not have been intended entirely for the way that I'm going to apply it here, but the scripture does establish that there is an instant that is in season and there is an instant that is out of season, but both are instant. One is at the expected time and another is at the unexpected time. So those of you who are confusing suddenly with immediately, you are allowing yourselves to become frustrated over what should be a great source of hope because we have a God who is able to do things suddenly. And because of that, we have no reason to worry when he does not meet our need immediately. Think about this. God did not part the Red Sea immediately. They had to stand around for a little while. But he did do it suddenly. Jesus didn't raise Lazarus from the dead immediately. There was a progression from where have you laid him? Take ye away the stone. But when the time came, when the moment came, it, was, it took just a moment. The very instant that Jesus cried, Lazarus, come forth. The miracle suddenly took place. When the time for healing had long passed, at the most unexpected time, amen, God came through. The Holy Ghost was not poured out upon the disciples immediately. No, they had to tarry in that upper room in prayer for several days. But when the day of Pentecost was fully come, suddenly, Acts chapter 2, suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh, how many miracles we have cheated ourselves out of. Because our mindset said the miracle has to happen right now. And then if the miracle doesn't happen, if it's delayed, then, well, I'll do my best to hold on for a healing. But then what? At what point do we lose hope in the face of affliction and tribulation? These types of adversities that go on and on until they drain the last ounce of expectation out of you. Then what? Well, I'm trying to help you today. God wanted me to remind you that there is another mode of the miraculous that happens suddenly instead of immediately. And so be strengthened and encouraged today in the Lord. Don't give up on your miracle. It could happen any moment. It could happen any moment. Keep believing. Keep your faith in God. And I believe that you're going to see your miracle come to pass. Amen. Let's take our knees before the Lord today. And let's approach the throne of grace with boldness and with confidence in our God today, knowing that he is able to take care of whatever situations that we are dealing with this morning. Amen. Let's begin to worship him right now. Lord, we come to you in worship and praise. We come to you, Lord, in thanksgiving today for all of your blessings. Lord, whether they be material or, or, or physical things or whether they be of a spiritual nature, Lord, we thank you for all things you're our provider, you're our sustenance, you're our source, Lord, and we give you praise, and we worship your holy name, Lord. Your name is worthy of honor and of all veneration today, God, of all glory and praise. It all belongs to you. This is your kingdom and your power and your glory, Lord, that we are allowed to take part in today, and we want to give you the praise that you deserve. Hallelujah. I worship you, mighty God. I praise your great name. Lord, be exalted in my life and through my life today, God. Hallelujah. Be exalted, Lord. Hallelujah. Be lifted up, Lord Jesus. We want you to be enthroned in our houses today, God, in our homes, where we're at right now, Lord. Just let your presence abide with us, God. Hallelujah. As we draw near to you, we love you, God. We praise your name.
We praise your name. And we come today, Lord, with submitted hearts to your will. Lord, to ask things in your name. Because, Lord, we know it's your will to heal. It's your will to save. It's your will to deliver. And so we pray, God, with confidence today in you. Hallelujah. That we're asking you things that you already desire to do. We didn't come today to twist your arm or in any way to try to force you to do anything. Lord, we're helpless and we're hopeless without your grace, without your mercy. But our eyes are upon you and we turn to you, God, in the midst of our our problems and our needs today, God, that we have no control over. We know that you are the almighty God and you have all power. Hallelujah. We pray for your will to be done in our families today. We pray for your will to be done in our communities, God. We pray for your will to be done in our churches today. Hallelujah. In our nation, Lord, in our world today, God, we trust you for the answers to every need, every prayer that's going up today around the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you praise and thanks for all that you're doing. Hallelujah. I noticed yesterday that um, our missionaries in Hong Kong were praying with us at some point during the day. We're still on a totally different time there, but Brother and Sister O'Donnell, you know, there's prayers going up right now here at uh, between 7.30 and 8 in the morning, but there's prayer that's going up around the world all day long, and that's what's going to change the situations that we are in is the prayer of the people of God. The word said, if my people, which will humble themselves, uh, call by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, amen, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. There's going to be a moment, there's going to be an instant that the miraculous is going to take place, amen, amen. Let's continue to pray. Let's continue in this spirit of prayer. Lord, we come to you right now asking you to intervene in this COVID-19 situation. And we pray for the families that we know of, the Trimble family, Brother Eli Hernandez. Lord, our church is in New York Metro District. Lord, and, and the pastors that are there that have been diagnosed, the saints in their churches that have been diagnosed with COVID, and some of them are fighting for their lives. We pray for Carmen's friend, Jessica, today, Lord, who's tested positive as well. We pray for for Christy's mom and dad who are both battling the virus right now. We pray for Aunt Faye's loved one today that's battling with coronavirus. In Jesus' name, we pray, Lord, for those who have been tested even here locally this week, God, and are awaiting their, uh, the report. We pray for a good report, Lord. We pray for a negative uh, test in Jesus' name. Lord, you hold all power, and we believe you, God, to reach down and to heal those that are sick in body from this virus today. In Jesus' name, we speak healing by the authority of the word of God. Hallelujah. By the power of the name of Jesus, be healed right now. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. Lord, we pray for protection for our health care workers, for those that are on the front lines, for those working in hospitals, Lord, right now that are coming in close contact with this virus. We pray, God, your protection upon them. And God, your strength, Lord, that they would not be weary, Lord, in well-doing. Oh, God, that they would have renewed energy. Some of them working long shifts, back-to-back -back shifts. God, keep your hand upon them. Help our doctors today. Help our firemen and our police officers. And Lord, all of our first responders, our truck drivers today that are on the road, God. We pray, God, for our grocery store workers. In Jesus' name, oh, hallelujah, keep your hand upon them. We pray for our country, Lord, that it would reopen and recover fully, God, that the predictions that the economists make, Lord, that they would not come to fruition, God, because you're the one that's in control. You have the power, Lord, for to shut things down and to start things up. And I know, God, that you're in this somewhere. Hallelujah. On the left hand, Job said, where he doth work, and yet I cannot behold him. And I believe in God that you're there. You've never left us in this situation. You're there, God, just waiting to manifest yourself. Hallelujah. Before us, in an instant, in a moment. The miraculous uh, is in progress right now. We give you thanks and praise. Hallelujah. We pray, God, for the Chattanooga area, the Jonesboro area that right now are recovering from 
tornadoes, Lord. We pray your help for the people that live in those communities and those who have lost someone tragically, those that are in the hospital, the, the businesses that have been decimated because of this. God, we pray your help for them today. We pray for Jamie Dixon, Lord. Hallelujah. Touch his body right now. Lord, let him have a great result on those tests that are being run right now. And we pray, God, for his spiritual restoration in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we remember today best need, God, and bring it before your throne for her family. Lord, for the Jones and Gilliams families today, God, we pray you would move, Lord, according to your will in that situation right now. In Jesus' name, I pray, God, for Caden and for Michael Bolin and for Delbert Bryant. We curse the cancer that's in their body. We continue to believe you, Lord, for a miracle. Hallelujah. It may not happen uh, immediately, but God, we believe that it will happen suddenly. We believe, God, that your healing virtue is going to flow into them at any moment. In the name of Jesus, we pray, God, for Brandy right now. Lord, that she would recover fully from that stroke, that her progress would confound the medical world. In Jesus' name, God, you are able. We pray, Lord, for my dad and for my mother-in-law. In Jesus' name, God, help them to hold on to faith and to keep believing your word and to receive their miracle. Help us to believe with them and to strengthen and encourage them. And we curse Parkinson's disease right now. In Jesus' name. We pray for Priscilla's need for her husband today. God, grant him your direction, your wisdom in his decision-making process right now. Show him the way, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, speak in your gentle way and press upon him the answer. And we'll give you the praise and the glory for the solution in Jesus' name. We pray, God, for every backslider, every prodigal. Lord, that have drifted away from you, those who have once known you, God, but have walked away for whatever reason. The reason right now is not important. What is important is that they have a soul that's going to spend eternity somewhere. And we pray, God, right now that you would deal with their hearts, that in this time, God, this challenging time, Lord, that they would take inventory of their lives. And, Lord, they would see their need of you in this moment, God, and that they would turn back to you. Hallelujah, let that miracle of restoration and of deliverance, God, take place in their lives today. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we pray for Marcia's daughter and son-in-law that are both sick today. God, minister your healing touch to them right now. Wherever they're at, I pray, God, that your presence would move into that room. Hallelujah, and minister a healing touch right now. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We pray for Micah today, God. We pray for his healing today. In Jesus' name, let there be complete healing in his body right now. We give you the praise for what you're doing, Lord. We thank you for your touch upon Gerald. We pray you would continue, Lord, to minister to his need today. Hallelujah. That he would be able to go home from the hospital sooner than they, even their latest projection, God. And we thank you for that progressive work of healing in his body. We pray for Ronnie and Paula today, God. We ask for healing for Ronnie right now. We ask, God, for an uplifting of Paula's spirit, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, that the spirit of heaviness would be replaced, God, with the oil of joy and gladness. Oh, hallelujah, Lord, lift her up right now. Encourage her, help her to receive what she needs from you. In Jesus' name, we pray for peace and comfort, Lord. For Chris's family today, for his aunt and uncle that have suffered loss of two different family members, we pray, God, you would comfort them. We pray for all of those that are having to conduct funerals right now without being able to have family and friends there, Lord, with the limitations that are in place right now. We pray, God, that you would comfort their hearts in the place of those that would be hugging their necks and, and crying and weeping with them, Lord and comforting them. We pray, God, that your presence would just make up the difference today. We pray for Laura's family, God. Comfort their hearts. We pray for those boys that have just lost their mother, God. Oh, we pray, God, that you would help them to get through this. In Jesus' name, we give you thanks, Lord, for all things. I think we ought to just praise the Lord. Let's just give him glory and praise right now. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. 
for every answer to prayer. We thank you, Lord, that you heard our prayers. Uh, your word tells us, God, that you hear our prayers. Your word tells us that when we ask things in your name that you respond. And we thank you that we can come in confidence today, that we can believe you, Lord, for signs and wonders and miracles uh, in this present day because you never change. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. You're still on the throne. And so we give you glory and honor for it, for all these things. And we ask them in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I feel the peace of God this morning. I feel his sweet presence. You know, God doesn't move the same way every time that we come to church or every time that we pray, but he always moves. And I sense such a sweet moving of the presence of God this morning. Amen. God bless all of you that have prayed with us this morning. I see uh, Brother Mark Wheeler, my good friend, has joined us today. Brother Arnold with us again today. God bless all of you, amen, that have joined us today for prayer. I look forward to continuing this devotion, this, this conversation that we're having um, about the progression of the miraculous. Tomorrow we're going to talk about three different instances and we're going to see some very exciting things in the Word of God along this topic. And then we'll conclude our devotion in this area on Friday. So a great week talking about uh, miracles and healing. And I believe we're going to experience those things because you get what you preach. You get what you teach. And uh, we're going to experience those things together. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow morning at 730. And have a great day in the Lord.